here for our previous performance. It was absolutely outstanding. It is also a revelation as to what can occur when there is unity and harmony working together. Other things work together to produce different results. One of those things is going to be brought forward today, but you might not find them to be a pair that you consciously recognize as being in your backyard. Try ignorance and arrogance. <laughs> Friends of yours, right? <laughs> well, there's a lot of effort being put forth right now to find solutions to the ills of the world. When the fact of the matter is we simply need to remove the cause of the problem, and that is what I just mentioned. Ignorance and arrogance. They work together and they work off of each other. They are inseparable. Most of you are familiar with Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci. One of his statements that probably has slipped through the lattice because of his tremendous capacities in art expression is the greatest deception men suffer is from their own opinions. I see a lot of head nodding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are these opinions? They're the result of personal background, prejudice, and access to perceived knowledge. And yet they seamlessly morph into solidified fact. <laughs> Most of science, and almost all of public perception of fact, is little more than opinion and assumption repeated into general acceptance. So what we generally accept as fact, as truth, to a large extent, really is nothing more than just assumption. It's really a masking of our ignorance and we hide behind that with arrogance. So here we are. Welcome to planet Earth. <laughs> Welcome to these days and times. But something is happening. To look out there, you may not see it. Inside yourself, you may begin to experience it, and that's this rumbling that's occurring. As a matter of fact, it's manifesting itself as something that is exploding in us. And it is life-changing insight that is occurring. Now what is happening to us is definitely going to have a profound effect upon the education, science, medicine, politics, and media that are all founded on the belief of the known. The known is the domain of the five physical senses. We know that. The known really is I only believe I know. But it's very foundational for human society. Here's, here's the key to this. You can only learn, you can only truly learn by uncovering the unknown. Everything else is repeating. We go through our whole lives repeating things that we have been taught to be true until something happens inside of us and we start questioning and we get serious about our questioning and we come to realize what we believe we know to be true isn't really true at all. We have, in essence, been reshaped, reformed from our original design, and that is as a 
heart-oriented being that would then form a heart-oriented society and to a gut society. Look at how much emphasis is placed upon feeling and then look at the types of feelings that are emphasized. We are so programmed to feel and feel intense feelings of fear, anger, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, even to the point of anxiety, that it overrides our heart's natural capacity to discern and decipher and figure out what's really going on. And that's because we go from our gut to our brain, and our brain takes the instructions of our gut and puts us into an automatic mode of operation that seems to confirm the fact of what appears to be true when it isn't true at all. So really what we are involved in doing is making a shift here. We're moving away from just gut feeling to heart awareness. Then we find that as the heart grows stronger, the brain actually operates as it's designed to operate, and that is simply to follow the lead of a heart. It's a funny thing, but this is most contrary to what you experience in our everyday world, because the one who follows the crowd usually gets no follow than the crowd. That's safe. You're not making any waves. Everybody pretty much knows that. Now, Einstein has said this, that one who follows the crowd usually gets no follow than the crowd, but the one who walks alone actually finds himself in places no one has ever seen. So what we're talking about here is moving away from the known into the unknown, because it is the unknown that is going to give us answers that we'll never get if we only stick with what we know. Now, this may seem challenging to you, and I know that it has and that it will from time to time, but I also want to encourage you to realize that you're doing something about it, you see. You see, this explosion of life-changing insight takes place within the individual. It is the individual who wakes up to it. It is the individual who embraces it. It is the individual who finds the courage to actually live it, and in living it, experience the transformation inside of self. To where you stop relying upon head information, and you start relying upon heart awareness, heart wisdom, heart discernment. As you do this, you find that you actually begin to feel more powerful. It doesn't happen just in one or two shifts. It doesn't happen within the realm of just an even flow. It's a back and forth, it's an in and out. It's a rise, it's a fall, it's a shutdown, it's a waking back up. It's all of these things combined that we choose to go through in our efforts of actually experiencing what this life-changing insight is all about. We actually live it, and in living it, we find that it reveals itself and confirms to us through the different experiences we have just what our insight is bringing us into contact with. Now, no society wants its members to think. Thinking is dangerous, especially if it's based upon heart awareness. The heart, and the heart chakra, the heart vortex, is a massive electromagnetic field where human perception works and works so well when it is unimpeded. It is possible for us to override the brain, but it requires a dedication and a persistence to move beyond the patterned behavior that we have come to believe we need to live 
in order to live a successful life. Heart awareness is basically revolutionary. When you hear somebody speak in terms of, I'm living from my heart, you'll notice that a lot of the people that are around will say, hmm, that's nice. That scares the hell out of me. <laughs> living from your heart? Are you out of your mind? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and that's part of the revolutionary action of taking place, you see. Okay, so if you look at this, heart awareness being revolutionary, you see that its very quality, its intrinsic quality, is rebellion. It rebels against darkness. It rebels against untruth. It rebels against slavery, no matter what form it's being expressed through. It is rebellion against everything that prevents man from becoming his total grown-up self. Now, there was a fellow by the name of Bruno who recognized this from another perspective and he said that divine light is always in man. It's always presenting itself to the senses and to man's comprehension. But man rejects it. And what happens then is heroic love, the expression of the heart, is the property of superior natures. But these superior natures are called the same. Not because they do not know, but because they over know. And to the unknown, this is liberation. To the known, this is fear producing. The known always fears the unknown. Because right now, you see, the known has a dominant position in choice making in one's life. When the unknown begins to reveal its properties, the known is weakened because it no longer has that position of authority. Stop and think about it in your own lives now. What you believe you know, who in you operates on that frequency of, I know this, I know that, when an unknown is presented to it, hmm, challenged indeed. Many times the challenge is to such an extent that it is violently opposed. Violently opposed by the one in you who is feeling so threatened by it. You see, you don't have to go out there to get the confirmation with regard to this. You can experience it within yourself. When you do experience it within yourself, then realize this is the part of you that has grown so secure in a set of facts that have little or no truth to them whatsoever. So, I would like to really wrap this up today with your permission and also your participation. So, I would really like for you to declare something. Are you up to this? Yes. yes. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I want you to declare. I am submissive. Are you? We can't see I am submissive. Are you? <laughs> Are you? I am submissive. I am submissive. You are. Think about it. When you're operating in that mode, you're passive. You allow things to happen to you. And you always go about it in such a way of declaring, what else can I do? He had a big gun. <laughs> okay. Now, I want you to see that in your own internal experience, what is occurring is a shift is taking place. This explosion 
this explosion of life-changing insight that is registering in you and is stirring you at a heart level to come to a place of living your heart awareness. Now, this being the case, you can go beyond that and move from submissive to subversive. That almost sounds like a guaranteed sentence in jail, doesn't it? <laughs> well, isn't that the way we're taught in our society? Yeah. Subversive? So can you say, I am subversive? I am subversive. Wow, you said that with a little more, <laughs> a little more juice than you did the submissive part. OK, again, I am subversive. 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 And I'm happy to declare it. And I'm happy to declare it. I declare that I am subversive. I declare that I am subversive. Absolutely subversive. Absolutely subversive. Okay. So, you just joined ranks with a great category of people that have come into this world and because of their subversive nature, have wound up dead. <laughs> okay, Jesus Christ, okay, you get that one? Okay. He's dead, he was pretty subversive. Okay, how about Socrates? Socrates likewise was subversive. So subversive that they said, you gotta go. <laughs> and so he did. How good or good? They stoned the guy. Was he subversive? Absolutely he was subversive. What did he teach? Oh my God, you don't even want to go there. <laughs> His teaching was so contrary to the norm. You look at this and you say, okay, I'm in a pretty good group of people now. I think I will identify with this and I'll let myself continue in my awakening to where my heart opens up and begins to operate as it was designed to so that I can actually experience the fullness of this explosion of life-changing insight. Got it? Got it. Okay, so what are you? Subversive. What are you? Subversive. Again. Subversive. For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.